I uh, wanted to make a little video uh, on how to check your Jeep Cherokee XJ for play and it's steering or just if it's not steering like it should be on what to do. Um, this should apply to ZJs, TJs, WJs, even though they have a different steering setup and really any solid axle vehicle. They work in a similar way and checking for play is simple. Um, I built my Jeep to uh, hold nicely on the highway, though I haven't done much mods to it, you'll see as I make them. Um, Whatever the case is, it's easy to do. If you decide to replace with OEM steering, that's always a great option. Or if your Jeep is a little more modified, um, really pushing 33s and up, that's when you should probably consider doing aftermarket stuff. Um, I have a few aftermarket parts on mine, as I'll show, but whatever works best for you. Um, yeah, I've, I've been on multiple trips, even in, like through the middle of uh, Idaho, Arizona, stuff like that and it holds up great at 80 miles an hour um yeah we'll go over uh what to check how to check it um primarily checking it by you can either have a friend sit in the jeep and turn the wheel from 10 to 2 and then what you'll do is just watch the links just as i'm showing in the video or what you can do if you're only on your own is you can have uh, a video camera set up and you can just record each component as you make your way through just like the video is showing and uh, you know compare them to how they should look if you see any play it's probably a good idea to replace them if you see boots that are torn you'll see torn boots in mine um, it's a good idea to get those repaired because they will ruin those ball joints over time um, but just stuff to keep an eye out for You'll definitely notice that the boot looks terrible on this right here. Definitely a good opportunity to replace that boot and uh, check it out. Uh, you have to pull the joint anyway, so if you feel any play, that'd be a good place to replace it. Um, but yeah, something like that, it's just going to leak all your grease out, you're going to get grime in there, and it's just going to eat away at the material until it just has even more play. So having uh, torn boots is, it may not be showing play, but it's something to keep an eye on and try to fix so you can prolong its life. Um, it's also a great opportunity to fill all of the other steering components up with grease while you're there. So this is actually a pretty common failure point on our Dana 30s. That bracket there is just so thin and over time those bolts just eat it out over time. And it will cause play. Your bushing can be in perfect shape but they will just egg shape out and you'll have play. No matter how tight you do, it just has play. There's some pretty easy solutions for it, uh, getting up to more complex ones for some that may enjoy fabricating a little more. Uh, really anything from uh, taking the bolts out and welding a washer on, that would probably be a great option. Um, or taking the bolts out again, drilling out the hole. Now this one involves you having to get a new flag nut, a regular nut too. Clayton Off-Road offers a product. You drill it out to 9 16 of an inch. You do, have to, you do have to drill out your pushing too, but invest some time with the drill. And then uh, you torque it down to like 146 foot-pounds and basically your problems go away. Although you can see that mine is still happening and I have that Clayton and that, so um, let that speak for it how it does, but whatever, it's just a known problem. Uh, the solution I'm currently on is to just get a um, that Stinky Fab um, track, bar, uh, track bar bracket. It's thick, it allows you to use a regular bolt and regular nut because a wrench will fit up in there easier, and you're not going to have to worry about it eating out. Um, I don't know how thin the factory one is, but this one is probably 3 sixteenths of an inch thick and you're never going to have a problem with it. It's 40 bucks, I think, well spent. You're going to have some welding, there's some videos on it, but I think it's a worthwhile upgrade. But yeah, it's a known problem. I didn't even notice I had this before I recorded the video. Um, 
but it's another source of play. If your trackbar is moving, that's just one less thing that's not responding when you turn your wheel. So you'll want to give that a good look. Um, and there's some easy solutions for it. It's a known problem. So when you do your steering box, checking for that, you're going to want to make sure you're not steering as hard. What you want to see is how much free movement in the steering wheel you have in your uh, um, free wheel in the steering wheel, uh, wheel without turning the pitman arm. So for this, you won't turn as hard going from like 10 to 2 and you're kind of cranking on it a little more. Um, you'll just kind of want to lightly kind of pull the wheel left and right without turning the wheels. Um, and it's, I think that my steering box has a little bit more play than it should but it's not terrible. Um, if you have good caster, it's it's something that you likely won't notice on the highway anyways. Your wheels should be keeping you straight, but it just means you have to turn the wheel that much more to get the steering to actually do something. Um, so there is an adjustment for it. I believe Bleep and Jeep has made a video. There's a few other people that have made the video. You basically adjust what's called the over-center, uh, I think it's called the over-center rod, something like that. It's when you look, when you open the hood and you look right in the engine bay, you'll see the steering box and you're going to see a hex nut with a little allen key in it and what you'll do is you'll loosen that nut and tighten the little allen key a little bit and it'll help. There's videos to watch, definitely watch that first. Um, you don't want to tighten it too much because it can definitely uh, take up too much lash and ruin your steering box more but it's it's kind of a free thing to check that might help out. Um, in my case I'll probably end up doing that and then down the line probably go to Red, Red Head or uh, maybe PSC or something like that, I'm not sure. But uh, my box is leaking pretty, pretty bad too, so I think it's time to replace. But just wanted to mention that. So you'd think that steering play would end with the, uh, you know, like the steering linkage, track bar, uh, then tie rod, drag link, and boom, it's done, right? Well, your steering play can still be caused by a few other things. Um, another thing to check in this case would be your ball joints, wheel bearings, stuff like that. Um, because when you have the, like the ball joint play, it causes a little bit of camber, or negative camber I believe, it, 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 it can change, but it's just one, one extra thing that causes play in your steering. To check this, what you'll want to do is uh, lift the front axle off the ground, and um, make sure you have the wheels chopped first, you don't want it rolling anywhere. But uh, yeah, you'll lift it off the ground and make sure that it rotates just a little bit. And you want to do this for both sides. And you're going to grab the wheel at uh, 9 o'clock, or sorry, not 9 o'clock, at uh, 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. And you're just going to push back and forth with each hand. And you're going to try to rock it. And if you see any play in those ball joints, what you're going to want to do, any play or sound even, um, what you're going to want to do is uh, look at replacing them. Spicer is a great quality brand, uh, Dana Spicer Major Axle, that's my go-to, um, but I think it's a good thing to look at. Uh, wheel bearings too, generally when a wheel bearing's go going out, you'll hear a howling sound like a woo as you're going down the highway, it's really loud, um, but that's another thing to look at. I have some Duralast ones that are doing great, but um, it's something you want to look at. Ball joints and wheel bearings is basically what you're checking by going, grabbing the wheel from left to right and rocking it and then top to bottom and rocking it and if you hear any play, feel any play, try to take a look, feel it, if you see it, um, ball joints, those are a known thing, um, might be time to do that, otherwise, uh, you know, it'd be time for uh, wheel bearings or something else, but yeah. So if you've gone through your entire steering linkage and you're just finding that everything is tight and exactly how it should be, you know, your, your steering linkage is tight, your track bar is tight, your control arm bushings look good, just everything looks good, it's a good idea to check out your alignment. 
caster effects, so, you know, wandering and straight line stability, especially on the highway. So if your Jeep is lifted, you'll especially notice this, and it's on uh, factory control arms. Uh, the more you lift it on factory control arms, the more caster you lose, and it'll just, uh, it'll be a losing battle. Uh, you'd fix it with adjustable control arms or long arms or uh, shimming or just, just messing with it in some way, but I usually adjustable control arms. Um, and a uh, caster is easily measured just by taking an inclinometer, such as your angle finder on your phone or an uh, angle finder like a physical one that uses the hanging thing, and you'll zero it out to the ground. It's very important. And when you zero it out to the ground, you're going to uh, then put it on your upper ball joint. You want to do this for both sides too, making sure to zero it out to the ground, because uh, when you flip it around, that's going to affect your angle. But zero it out for the ground each time, and put it on the upper ball joint, and then measure that angle. I didn't do the best job on this. Uh, I I wasn't really holding it right. I was focusing on the, the video, but uh, it's pretty easy to do. Mine, my caster is more like six degrees, and it holds up great. The more you lift the Jeep, the more caster you lose. The only problem is uh, with the lifted Jeeps, especially the low pinion uh, front axle ones, so the 2000 and 2001 Cherokee guys, all the TJ guys, and the ZJ guys, I think that's correct, um, they're going to have the low pinion. And when you, lift it, when you lift it more and you want to add more caster, you actually make your pinion angle worse, and it's not really going to it's not going to be good on your U-joints. You're going to have driveline vibes. So generally what you'll do for caster is just adjust it to get as much caster as you can until the point where you get driveline vibes and then you'll just pull a few degrees out. Um, you can have an, uh, a local shop check this for you. You can take it down to a local Jeep shop. They should know what they're doing. But it's a, it's a pretty thing, easy thing to check. And if you measure the angle on your upper ball joint, it says like zero degrees and you're looking at your steering and it's tight, and uh, you're wondering why is it wandering all over the road? Well, caster is a pretty good reason. That'd probably be a likely cause. Um, might be worth adding a few degrees in there, and that should help you out. Um, good caster has made a very, very noticeable difference to where when it's off by a few degrees, I definitely notice it. Um, something like bad upper ball, uh, not well, I suppose ball joints could help a little, or um, bad ball joints could cause a little bit, but primarily bad uh, control arm bushings. That could be a cause for bad caster too if you already had it aligned and it's starting to get worse. Um, but otherwise, just checking it would be a good idea. So I also wanted to mention just a few upgrades I've done. I've only really done the two upgrades I'm other on otherwise stock steering, but it's done really great. I really love Iron Man 4x4 Fab. They have great customer service, great quality, great product, um, just a great company. And uh, they make this great steering brace. It goes on to your uh, Pitman arm nut, it replaces it, the shaft goes on there, you screw everything in. It took me about an hour to install and it noticeably tightened up my steering. I think it's a great option to check especially for those um, that wheel a little harder uh, they should consider it too it really protects your unibody which is another good place to check for any play you'll hear some popping there it's known for cracking there or uh, the steering box spacer that's another good place to check for any play in your steering um, just to make sure the steering box isn't moving but it protects all those things helps them and it really tightens up your steering I love it the Iron Man 4x4 Fab steering brace is probably my favorite upgrade in steering I also have the Iron Rock Off-Road HD tie rod. It's a solid, um, big chunk of steel replacement that you can do, and it's um, it's awesome. It's a great replacement for those with uh, you know just factory steering. It'll work on really any lift height with factory steering. Um, I love it. It's a good upgrade in strength. The factory tie rod just bends really easily. It's uh, 
it's a great upgrade. I think any wheeler, really 31s, 32s, maybe even 33s or under should really consider it if they want to go wheeling. That factory tie rod is just weak. I love it. Great product. You just got to do an alignment afterwards and you're good. Uh, thanks for watching along. I hope this video was helpful for you, um, or at least entertaining to some degree. Able to show you, uh, give you some direction on where to go if you have some play in your steering, what the causes might be, what you can do to replace them. Um, uh, yeah, I'm definitely doing my best to get better at making videos, and having COVID hasn't really helped my speaking, but yeah, I hope it's been enjoyable. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or if I've done something wrong or just anything. I'll be sure to answer. Thank you.